why doesn't India de-recognize Tibet as part of China when Arunachal Pradesh is not considered a part of India by the Chinese? Who recognized it in the first place and why was it Nehru? Let me answer the second part of the question first. Who recognized Tibet as part of China? It wasn't Shri Nehru who did that. It was Shri Atal Bihari Vajpayee who officially recognized Tibet as part of China in exchange for China recognizing Sikkim as part of India. Sikkim, Tibet. So in exchange for China recognizing this tiny Sikkim as part of India, Mr. Vajpayee decided to recognize officially the whole of Tibet as part of China. Incredible. So this was another Gandhian move actually. So that that is the the story of India. People, uh, our our leaders giving, uh, I mean, making such uh, unequal arrangements and treaties. So the question then is, why doesn't India de-recognize Tibet as part of China? When the Chinese don't recognize Arunachal Pradesh as part of India, they say it is their territory and they don't uh, believe in the one India policy, but they want us to uh, follow a one China policy. So here's the thing. Let's say tomorrow India de-recognizes Tibet as part of China. India says Tibet, Tibet is a disputed territory. What is going to be the Chinese reaction? It's not going to be anger. They are going to take certain steps. See, today... China is the world's manufacturing powerhouse. It manufactures all kinds of uh, spare parts, ingredients, things that you need in your supply chains and all that. Right? And there are lots of things that India needs from China. Lots of goods, materials, uh, spare parts, things like that. Our industries need spare parts that are manufactured in China. We need semiconductors. We need other things that are manufactured in China. The Chinese will stop all the supplies. It's essentially economic sanctions and trade sanctions. So when we stop receiving these things things from China, our economy will suffer a significant setback. So China is currently today in a position to impose a great amount of pain and cost, economic cost on India by simply shutting off the tap and refusing to give to send India all or any of these supplies. And that is the leverage they have over India. So the, so the Chinese started uh, developing their manuf- manufacturing sector back in the 1970s, the late 1970s, early 1980s. And they have slowly, steadily invested in that and made it more and more uh, and and, and, uh, seen a great amount of progress. So initially they were were, uh, manufacturing just very basic things. But as the expertise grew, they started manufacturing more and more complicated instruments and, and things. And today, the entire global supply chain is fed by Chinese manufacturing. Right. And they are able to manufacture anything in the world. So they can shut that down for India or any other country that does not uh, recognize Tibet or Taiwan, etc. as part of China. That they can impose genuine costs on, on such a country, especially India. So that is the reason. There are real reasons why India is not uh, taking such an action. And India had the opportunity to do this before China, but India never did that. Even today, India is not really well, it has not progressed much in the field of, in the manufacturing and in other sectors, right? So India will have to build its economy, grow its economy to at least $10 trillion in GDP before India can think of challenging China in, in such a manner. So there are real, genuine economic and geopolitical reasons why India is currently not taking such an action.